Earlier in the week, Bethesda told us that they're going to do better on communication, actually give us some of the patch notes noticeably ahead of time of the actual patch, and just in general, it seems like they wanted to communicate better overall, which we have been seeing somewhat, especially on some of these subreddits, or really just one subreddit. I guess the official Fallout subreddit's too negative for them to participate in. Well, either way, just today, we actually got the patch notes for this up-and-coming patch. This is going to be coming out on this Tuesday, that being December 4th. Last time, it came out at around 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Typically, Bethesda releases things in that ballpark. So if you're playing on the servers at that point, typically they will be taken down or you will have to update your game version to reconnect to them. Just something important to keep in mind. So looking at the patch things, they say quite a few things and quite a few things we didn't know were getting added. For whatever reason, Bethesda decided to include on this patch notes that PC frame rates have been uncapped. As they mentioned here, and as many of us noticed, this was actually patched on November 19th's patch. They just never said anything about it. It was nowhere found in the patch notes, and we just found out when we actually launched the game. They mentioned some additional stability improvements. What that means, I have no idea, but hey, that's cool, I guess. One of the big updates coming with this that a lot of us have been waiting for is the stash size increase. They mentioned here that as of right now, they're increasing stash size by 50%, that meaning that you'll have 600 weight for your stash instead of the 400 as it is right now. They also mentioned, which they've said in the past, that this is going to be a conservative increase. In the future, they may increase it further depending on server stability. Basically, if there's too many items on a server, it can lead to instability, so having a higher stash limit means you'll probably have more items in that stash and thus, again, more server instability. It seems like this is very likely a byproduct of actually taking a single player game and its engine and trying to make it multiplayer, considering there are probably hundreds, if not thousands of other online games that have no real issues in how many items you can store. But then what might actually end up being one of the first actually pretty big balance changes to Fallout 76 is the XP you get for killing high level enemies is going to be decreased. So if you are XP farming, trying to power a level through the top, then I would do that like now, not before this patch on Tuesday. I definitely think I might start a second character and just try and get him to a higher level. They don't specify how big of a reduction this is going to be, but I wouldn't be surprised if it makes a notable difference. They also mentioned they'll fix a bug so you'll actually get the correct amount of loot for taking down a boss. And then finally, another fairly big balance change, automatic weapon damage is going to be increased by 20% across the board. So if you were already going for an automatic weapon build, congratulations, you just got a pretty considerable buff, and if you weren't, now might be the time to look into that. Especially for some of the heavy weapons like the 50 cal or even the minigun, I could see this making a pretty big difference and hopefully making those things a bit more viable, because right now they kind of suck. They fixed that glitch where after hitting somebody with a cryolator, they would be slowed for like days at a time. I guess technically that was actually a feature, because then moving on, we have some of the bug fixes for Fallout 76 coming in this patch. A lot of these are fairly minor, so I'll go over some of the more major ones that have been affecting a lot of players. As I mentioned previously, they fixed the glitch where you can't exit your power armor. That glitch where you would lose items from moving your camp seems to have been resolved. They say that moving camp locations will now correctly move standalone items built by the player into the build menu stored tab. This is one that I just had affect me and it is so freaking obnoxious and just frustrating. It's just one of those things that when you log on and find it, it is extremely demoralizing. They say they fix the bug when you actually rank up a perk card, it'll cause a duplicate version of that to appear which is very nice because right now I have way too many perk cards and it makes it almost a little bit hard to get through them all. A particularly cool change to I think YouTubers and streamers, when you have a bunch of social notifications, the display time of them all will be reduced. Sometimes when I'm streaming, I would just get notification after notification, and it wasn't a huge issue, but when I actually wanted to use the social menu, it became a little bit more cumbersome. The electrically charged and unstable isotope mutations are no longer providing people with additional health. What actually seems more so like a new feature, after being AFK for 10 minutes, you'll actually be kicked from the game server. This is pretty interesting because I imagine a lot of people were kind of abusing this at least somewhat to actually farm items or farm locations, but then again, server hopping still a thing, so it just seems like all around a pretty positive change. That glitch where you just get a red crosshair out of nowhere and see the enemy name on screen has been resolved. And then two bug fixes that I think I'm really going to freaking enjoy. When you respawn after dying while over encumbered, you no longer will only see one respawn location. It was a really obnoxious and frustrating glitch and I'm happy that's getting resolved. And even beyond that, when you connect to a server, you no longer are going to get all of the different quests you have even if they're not active. That's another one that was just really freaking obnoxious. Now seemingly you'll only get the active quests, aka the ones you have selected at a time. And that's pretty much it. 
So one thing I actually want to point out, because it's an observation I've been having, but I feel like putting some concrete numbers behind this is just more effective. So in this patch, we're looking at 18 bug fixes. That, of course, is not including all the balance changes and new features added, but just as far as raw bug fixes, we have 18. If you actually go to that very highly upvoted thread on some of the Fallout subreddits, that's a compiled list of a good chunk of the bugs that are presently available, you'll find that there are 132 bugs listed on that. Thus far, we've actually had four patch notes in total, two being for the beta, two being for the release game, the past one, and then this one that isn't actually out yet. Bethesda has reportedly fixed 67 bugs. On average, they're fixing 16.75 bugs per patch. Let's just round it up to a nice even 17. So then as far as those 132 reported bugs, based on their current rate, it will take them 7.7 .7 patches to actually fix them all. That would take us into February, assuming they take off for Christmas, and that we continue to actually get patches on a weekly basis. So obviously some of these bugs are larger than others, you could argue they're fixing all of the bigger ones now, that's why there's less being fixed, but if you actually look at the patch notes, not all of them were like super massive bugs. Behind the scenes right now, I'm actually working on a video showing off some of the features in Fallout 76 that just don't don't work right now. They're not really exploits or anything like that, but like some of them are perk cards that you might have equipped on your character and they actually do nothing because the perk card doesn't work. None of that is actually addressed in this patch note, so that's 10 things about the game that right now you pretty much just can't use. I don't want you guys to just think I'm getting down on this game or just trying to make it seem as bad as possible. Really, more so than anything else, I'm trying to be realistic about this. And for where I'm sitting right now, it just seems like we won't see a mostly bug-free Fallout 76 for at least months. I've said in past videos that I really think Bethesda has a manpower problem and I think this is just more evidence of that. I can't help but imagine the developers working on this game want to have it bug free. But maybe the studio is simply understaffed and I wouldn't be surprised if some of those deadlines for DLCs are also something they have to start worrying about as the weeks do progress. They mentioned that come 2019, they're going to start releasing some of those DLCs, so that could even further slow down the rate at which we get some of these bug fixes. All in all, I'm hopeful for the future, but it's not like this patch is inspiring a bunch of confidence in me. It's really cool that we're getting some of those quality of life changes, but outside of that, I do hope they figure something out as to how fast they are patching it.